We are on the road to Hobbiton, a um, very touristy place, which means that a lot of Kiwis may not have ever even gone. Angie hasn't. So it should be fun. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. Uh, I feel like there's a lot less like tropical, like palm trees out here. Just different kind of scenery. Very green. In the country. In the country. First time in the country, you see. Yeah, since country. I've been here. So it was a little bit of a drive from Southern Auckland where Angie lives, but it was really beautiful and a nice peaceful drive. And just showing you some of that beautiful countryside, not, you know, big in the city or on the beaches or on the nature walks, but just the other side of New Zealand. Before not too long, we were in the city there. I'm forgetting the name, but, oh, Matamata, Mata, that's what it's called. But they have their sign. So you have no surprise, this is where Hobbiton is. Um, the local pubs and stores, a lot of them are also decorated kind of like that in honor of that. Good for tourism, I'm sure. But this is the main building where we go and um, that's where the tour starts. They have a little bit of uh, gift shop. Sorry, I can't use my words, but gift shop there where you can confirm your tickets and get ready for the tour bus to come pick you up. Hey guys, we are at the initial starting place of the tour. We've got our bus here. Let's go find some fun places. A? Oh, hey. They say A a lot. A. Hey. Hey, what do you feel, A? Hey. <laughs> oh, A. Hey. Oh, A. Hey. <laughs> it was a decent little bit of a bus ride, but it was pretty comfortable and pretty packed. We did get to watch some videos, a little bit of factoids on there, which was cool, except for I will say the sound wasn't very good. So that was kind of disappointing. But as you'll see here, there are a lot of sheep. This was actually a site that Peter Jackson was in a helicopter looking for a good place for Hobbiton to be, and he saw this farm. So it is a farm, you'll see um, throughout the pictures, that there are cattle but a ton of sheep thousands of sheep and he selected that area and the first time that they filmed lord of the rings it was all very um, destructible material not long lasting when they went back in for the hobbit series they rebuilt it all in a more lasting material so that it could be used as it is right now for tourism so cool factoid there so we all piled off the bus there were a lot of us which it was kind of frustrating. You couldn't hear the tour guide that very well and you had to be up close um, to hear all the facts and it was a little rushed, but it was still really cool and I still captured a lot of cool stuff to show with you guys. So this is just kind of the entrance as we're first coming in. Um, can't help but just love the intricacies and the beautiful things and I'll just share that with you and share some facts along the way. So it's fun to see kind of the Hobbit way of life. Um, that in touch with nature as we know they're also lazy creatures and they also have a lot of hills in the Hobbiton it's really vast it was it was a nice walk like a little not too steep but a lot of walking um, up here you can see some of the sheep now funny thing all of the sheep that you see in the movies are not these sheep Peter Jackson felt like these sheep looked too modern, so they all had to be removed from the premises and they brought in special sheep. Like, I thought that was just kind of a silly thing, but he paid a lot of attention to detail and that was one of them. You never saw these sheep or their family members. But it's just cool to see the intricacies um, when you look through things. You can see even though the, the windows aren't really real, I mean they're real, but like there's not anything behind them. There's not really a house back there on these that they got little bottles in the windows or little hobbies as you can see we had a lot of people <laughs> lots of people but um, also cool is that they have they used what's called forced perspective which means that some of the hobbit holes were very small while some were quite a bit larger depending on who is going to be walking by in the scene gandalf needed to seem very tall compared to very short hobbits now the actors you know, they, they had a certain height limit except for Frodo because, I mean, the star, you kind of go with your star and you work with that. But it's interesting. All the hobbit holes are not the same size. 
and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of that in this but of course they did make things miniature to size everything is trying to be um, within the scale of the scene each hobbit house had kind of a little bit of a hobby you'll see beekeepers you'll see maybe woodworkers those who are more into gardening and it's kind of fun to be able to actually see what they were probably into by the things that are around their little hobbit holes. One thing that was interesting that I don't think I knew, knew I'll be honest, I did not read the books. Um, I read a little bit of one of the books, but I've just seen the movies for the most part. But the higher you are up in the hill, the more prestigious and respected you are, which is why Bilbo Baggins' house was so uh, desirable, is because his is at the very top, and we will see that later. Along with sheep being removed, very particular about making things right, Peter Jackson had a special tree, an oak tree brought in to represent the one in the book there at the top of the hill. Now it does not sway because it is not alive. In the first one they um, erected it but it had kind of degraded a little bit until you know a few years later when they're filming the next set. So it is actually like cemented into the ground. Thousands of leaves are hand wired on and apparently the night before they did a big shoot he had them repaint every single leaf because he thought it looked like it was the wrong season, um, which is pretty intense, but that's kind of cool. All the rest of this, all these trees and, and grass and everything is real on site. Now, a lot of people ask <laughs> and are curious. I had a coworker like Skype me at work because he, he saw that I had been posting about this. Did you guys get to go inside? Well... Um, yes and no. You'll see in a picture of a minute here with me and my friend Angela. And we did get to go inside. You'll see us a little peeking out. Um, the thing is, the Green Dragon, so the pub, you can go inside. You can actually buy drinks. They've got a fireplace. It's all nice and set up. You'll see that later. Um, but otherwise, inside, they have this one hobbit hole here that you can kind of peek inside for a picture. That's it. And that's literally how much it opens. There was an inside set and there was an outside set. The inside set, who knows, I don't remember where she said that is, nowhere near, but this is the outside set. So nothing is actually in those Hobbit houses to actually go and see. So it's not as cool that way, it's not as interactive that way, but it's still really cool, kind of like a museum, a less interactive museum. Um, cool fact, when Gandalf hits his head on the beam, in the first Lord of the Rings, that was actually an accident, <laughs> but he played along with it and it was very fitting that a tall wizard being in these tiny little houses was a little ridiculous and a little cramped. I thought that was a fun little fact. But anyway, I'll let you see the rest of this and we'll get to the Green Dragon in just a moment. If you have any questions, definitely comment down below and I'll try to answer them and uh, respond to them. And if you are interested in more things about New Zealand, I've got vlogs out. I'm going to be putting more videos out. It was a really great adventure, but I just felt like this video deserved its own. You see this one? She's bent over. That one is smaller than the one we were standing in. If you kind of get that perspective difference. But this is kind of um, one of the more central areas where they have cleared out where they did the party.
So after we were kind of a bit more rushed than I would like for the price that was paid. <laughs> um, but you know, we learned some fun facts and got to see the cool artistry that went into all this. We went through a bit of a nature walk to get to the last part of Hobbiton and um, go to the Green Dragon. So couldn't help get a few nature shots and just enjoy. It is beautiful country there, it's so beautiful. But at the Green Dragon, they offered you um, a free drink I think three were alcoholic and then one which was not which was a ginger beer and it is the best ginger beer I have ever had I've had a few different kinds and it was perfect it was nice and spiced and not too um, sharp <laughs> and it was fun apparently not gluten-free though because uh, Angie has celiacs and it didn't treat her well so FYI those of you gluten-free people <laughs> be warned but it was just fun, like the authenticity of just even putting all these signs up and everything. It's fun. It is fun. If you are a diehard fan, I highly recommend it. If you could take it or leave it, it is a little bit on the pricier side for what I feel like we got. Um, but it's fun, like, because I watched the movies again afterwards while I was <laughs> flying home. And to see, oh, that scene, we, I was standing right there where the, you know, where, where Gandalf comes in the first time, the opening scene. So it's pretty fun. Here it is inside the Green Dragon. It was pretty crowded at the beginning, but I just tried to get um, in the lighting a little bit of the feel. Our tour guide was back there in the hat helping the others give us some drinks. So when all was said and done, we had our drinks, we got to see all the things. There was a store, of course, at the end for merchandise. I will be honest, I was a little surprised that they didn't have as much variety as I thought they would. And of course, things were pretty pricey. More pricey than I was willing to part with. They had a little registry book that was too full of names, so I just kind of <laughs> randomly put my name where I could find space. But um, was it worth it? Again, if you are a diehard fan, I say go for it. If you're really tight on money and eh, so-so, then maybe skip it and enjoy other things about New Zealand. It just depends. How much time? How much money? How much are you a fan? We're about to take off. Uh, Rosemary here is Andy's friend, great hostess. Just got to meet her for the first time. and Hi. They did some fun shopping while I was... <clears throat> we went up shopping. A bum. I spent at... three bucks. Oh, yes, yeah, she went up shopping. Up Shops are like thrift shops, charity shops, secondhand shops. And she got some treasures 
and anyway, we are off. Thank you so much, Rosemary. Say hi. My pleasure. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going on to our next destination, and we'll see you guys there. So this was just one day in my trip from New Zealand. I spent almost two full weeks there, so make sure to check out the other vlogs that I've got of all the fun things, and then also Fiji. So I appreciate you guys joining me. Make sure to su subscribe to join in the journey and uh, give a thumbs up if you really enjoyed the books or the movies. Let me know down below if you know any factoids that maybe I missed about the filming and it's pretty cool. You know, I wish we could have seen more Middle Earth, but Hobbiton by itself, not too bad. Have a great day, guys.